The best artist to fall off. Longevity. A long duration of individual life. Okay. Some are long lived, while others are cut short. Not Facts. only can this be applied to living, but also in all art and entertainment. Like, will this piece of work stand the test of time to be remembered as great? Or will Absolutely it be put not. In the modern art museum. Only time can tell. And many music artists throughout all the years had faded away alongside time. It's crazy to think about, cause yeah. some of these artists, or at least their songs, were all over the radio and playlists and constantly oh, being Fetty replayed. Wap. But by next Fetty year, Wap was everywhere. Shut up. Nobody's even having a thought about their music, let alone the artist. Their relevance was like receiving a happy ending from a lady boy in Thailand. <laughs> it lasts a good minute, but it finishes pretty quick. Oh. Don't judge my hobbies. Some Wait, I had to, uh, let, let me think about what you just said real quick, because what? Get the stinky end of this deal by having short bursts of fame, then yeah. run straight into irrelevance for the rest of their, well, lives and the rest are lucky enough to be one hit wonders with their hits being so timeless that we never forget them like who can forget yeah. a thousand miles by what's her name i swear every time that song comes on in a crowded place every bad thing that's going on in the world at it that stops moment comes it to just stops yep all of us sing along in perfect sync this song legit brings word peace she doesn't need another hit and silent till with watch me win watch me nay nay i mean none of us are playing that song nowadays Facts. but when it was out it was big. it was like, out all the kids were yeah. dancing that song when it was out it was out and everywhere you couldn't escape it and to show how much of a phenomenon this song was it was played at the biggest award show in the world isn't he gay now there were some people i can't remember it's either a him or some other people who made a song based like a dance ba a song based off a dance and now they're gay and they do they do like only fans or something like that i can't remember juju yeah, juju on that beat yeah juju is the one who did it the kids choice award you can't get bigger than that. That's a Facts. career peak for anybody. The impact of that song was insane. So you know the fall gotta be equal to that. Cause after the song wasn't hot no more, the Damn. man fell off so hard, he murdered his cousin. That's tough. There was Young Ma with Ooh. Oh, okay. Well, damn. Ooh. Young Ma this is crazy. It's Young M.A. Shame she didn't have another. But at damn. least some party or club somewhere will always be playing it. Well. I don't know. I'm not allowed in clubs, so. Estelle's American Boy, it hurts saying she's a one-hit wonder, but the song is amazing. Also, with a goaded verse I'm, from I'm, the goat, the song is genuinely oh, perfect. Oh, well, okay. She's really a one-hit wonder if you count the hits she made on Steven Universe. But forget everything I just said. When we think about the best artists to fall off, we think of the ones that had a big breakout song. Yep. An album that made people think this person will be here for the long yep, run. Yeah, Fetty Wap. They will become a household name. Fetty Wap. them to be in loving hip hop a few years later. I'm sadly talking about Fetty Wap. Yeah. Fetty Wap, artist that comes from Jersey, represent and probably the most popular rapper to come from here. Like I was searching New Jersey rappers and the second result is Fatboy SSE. So we're, we're kind of lacking. <laughs> Fetty Wap in 2015 literally blew up the entire hip hop industry with his sleeper hit at the time, Trap Queen, yeah. which came out a year prior before it even reached the Billboard charts. And when I tell you everybody was singing this song, and it was playing on every radio station, you couldn't escape it in a good way. You can't tell me everyone and their doctors didn't know the opening six words of the refrain of the song. <laughs> I'm like, hey, what's up, hello? And on April 4th, 2015, the song went number one on the billboard and what's crazy is he had more than trap queen so he wasn't a hit wonder one hit wonder bro he had six seven nine he had oh my way Ugh. baby won't you come my way it's like bro oh my god eden pitbull song now when you beat mr worldwide in the charts you're destined for greatness and number one on billboard is a crazy feat don't get me wrong but this dude still could have been a one hit wonder come on how yeah. many other people went number one only to be never heard of again yeah like, who the hell is the baby who? But bro proved everyone wrong. Cause one month after Trap Queen went number one, he released 679 Drake yep. Edition. Yeah. Uh, I have my qualms with Drake, but I like the song. I like the song. Proven he ain't no one hit wonder, but at least two. But soon after that, he released my his self-titled studio album. Bro did oh. not waste time. He saw the spotlight was on him and he took his opportunity in the best way possible. Again, my way. RGF Island. Yep. This album was filled with hit songs, or at least songs that would be played all over social media. Like Fetty Wap was basically the go-to artist to use in your vine back then. I mean, he was basically Michael Jackson. <laughs> no! Carl, close your eyes. No! 
and this dude's music was being played all the time on repeat. He was also making the songs he was featured in hit. Like nobody listened to Save That Money for Little Dicky. Let's be honest. We're all listening for that hook. Uh, it seemed like this guy was unstoppable. I forgot about Save That Money. I did forget about that. And you could tell he felt that way too. Cause one month after he released his studio album, he released another album. The consistency is crazy. I am right. And to top he was it trying to be on Young Boy. It was a collab album with none other than. French Montana. If you don't know who French Montana is, it's that nigga that Diddy cropped out in that one photo, and for good reason. This man is not a good rapper. Never in your life have you been in a car or a function and someone says, Hey, put on that new French Montana. That's so nasty. And if you have, you need to find new friends. These are That's the people so that are bad influences that your mom and dad were talking about. Go hang out with murderers and drug dealers instead. At least those guys will have a more positive impact on you than a nigga that willingly Damn. listens to French Montana. You have free will in this beautiful life you have. What did French do to everybody? What did French do, man? And you spend it on that? You can't trust it. Anyways, I mean, Grant, I don't listen to his music, but still. And it's 13 songs, and it's a two can of ass. Now, Fetty did have a better performance than French on here, obviously, but French had way more songs and verses than him, and overall, the album is just very bland. Mid? No uh, song sticks or, or stands out. It's just a nothing burger, bro. It has no replay value whatsoever. And after damn. this project, his music slowed down on coming out, which is so French Montana ruined his career. French Montana disease. It's fine. He don't have to be like Young Boy releasing an album every yeah. three days. In yeah. 2016, the next year, he had a good few charting songs he was featured in, and also his own single "Wake Up," peaking at 50 in the Billboard Hot 100. And during this period of time, it felt like the calm before the storm. Freddie was still in people's mouths. He was yeah. still performing sold-out shows and still charting. He was still He's very still much rich. popular. But after 2016, he kind of faded away out of the public eye more and more. He has released projects since then, but none of them created any buzz because overall, all of them were pretty mid. But also, there were no hits. See, Fetty Wap was very much a hit rapper, which is yep. not a bad thing. It's just a bad thing when you want a fan base that would actually stay. And since he wasn't making any more hits, more people stopped talking about him. Plus his new hey, music. Hey, he, he's still he's still getting them streams though. I'm just saying. Sounds identical to the rest of his other music. I mean, you can say the same thing for other artists too. But Fetty's music also sounds dated. Like he was a product of his time and didn't try any new sounds Damn. or styles with his music to catch up to his own contemporaries. Other than that 2018 six nine song Kiki, he has kind of disappeared from the popular space of music. And since then, in late 2022, he's pleaded guilty in drug charges and he's looking at five to 40 years in prison wow man how the great have fallen yeah he was on pace to outdo michael jackson <laughs> that's tough but also during his fall off trap queen is diamond 10 million units sold damn so at least he will also have a legacy to look back on in hip-hop history fetty Watt may have been a victim of falling down the stairs with a mediocre at best discography to look back on there's another artist that i believe fell off but on top Goat Ye. Goat Ye was a solo artist from Australia. What? He started his pro music career in 2001 Who? when he released his self-titled EP. And during these years, he sent his EPs to radio stations, building a name for himself up to the release of his debut album, Like okay. Drawn Blood, in 2006. And this album is actually pretty good. The songs have a unique flow and groove to them, and uh, I'm terrible at describing music I like. The music sounds good to my ears. Yeah. And apparently, others thought the same because this album was pretty successful in the Indie space. It was critically acclaimed. Okay, it so it's indie. So I have, I know nothing about it. Listener poll by Triple J, a popular Australian radio station. The track "Hearts a Mess" was ranked number eight on the station's Hot 100 of 2006. It also went platinum in Australia. Like, bro, wasn't a nobody before his real big hit happened, or at least not a nobody what was in this hit? It even won iTunes Album of the Year in the UK in 2008. Bro was kind of a big deal. He was he cooking. An even bigger one. He was once cooking he at least. His second solo album in 2011 making mirrors where one of his lead singles somebody that i used to know well oh blew the fuck up oh that was like somebody that i used to know you didn't have to cut me out that one that song was indeed a banger okay i know who he is now now i wish i could pick a different song as my favorite since i've listened to all of his solo music and also to see more cultured i guess 
but this is my favorite song from him. No matter how many times I listen to it, even after 10 years later, yeah. it doesn't get old. And yep. the whole sound of the song is unique too. Early 2010s pop radio songs were sounding more like electronic EDM dance music sounding like a YouTube gaming channel intro. You know, a lot of them <laughs> sound dated too, but not this song. Never this song. And the song did get his flowers. A lot of them too. And after his world tour, all eyes are still on him, especially since he just won the record of the year at the Grammy. Then he just what disappeared? Awards. The people were waiting for more music from him. Except that ain't happened. Bro went radio silent and not in Damn. a people who weren't interested in him no more kind of way. He no, just bro disappeared from everywhere social media even started you know? rumors saying he was dead where he went out of hibernation i'd rather go out on top than to fall off so i respect it it's in just a tweet now nah, i'm alive then not long after the tweet he posted a blog post saying he no longer will be releasing solo music and goat yay will be Damn. no more Huh? This dude just released one of the biggest songs of the decade and now he's quitting? Why? That's like shooting yourself in the foot. What the heck? Well, one it was too much hype. Post, he said he was to focus working on music with his band, The Basics. By the way, he's in the band. I didn't mention that. And okay. in interviews, he talks as if he doesn't really want the insane fame in the first place. Which is wait, wait. So he wasn't complaining about the fame when he was getting diamond in Australia winning British album of the year. But once the Americans get a hold of it, oh! Oh, now it's a problem. Once we get involved, <laughs> you know what? That's fair. Fine, I guess, if that's what he wanted. Plus, I bet he can have a steady living for the rest of his life on that one song alone. It's just missed potential. Because Goatye was genuinely a great artist who could have stayed for the long run. Instead of that one song being mostly his remembered legacy. Like, Bronte is a great song and has a greater music video. More people should see this. He still releases music with his band, The Basics, but I haven't listened to them yet. Plus, I've heard he's mainly the drummer. But Goatye is a great musician. You don't even so sing no more. I'd be surprised if I do like his band too. And maybe, hopefully, he could release more solo music in the future. All right, I'm gonna stop glazing this dude and move on to the next man. Or baby. Chance. Da baby. Da baby. Oh, oh. Rapper. Meme. Uh, car. He's mad popular. Also, some of y'all might be thinking, I thought this was the best artist to fall off. Why? Damn. Oh, oh. I mean, I'm not the biggest the baby fan, but damn. He pulls numbers though. I don't know if it's I don't know if his streams are fake, but he still get like 28 million views uh listeners a month on Spotify. Let me fact check myself. Later. He gets 32 million listeners a month. I mean, I, I don't know what you want him to do. Here. And yeah, he might not be nowhere near the best in anything but i like kirk and that's baby so on baby. nasty you know i think he is a better discography than fetty wap so now although this guy's debatable grace is kind of recent it's very evident that this man is 100 not the big star he used to be bro in 2019 and 2020 was on top yeah he released three albums that made it to the top of the charts Had yeah hit after hit bro's song rockstar with roddy rich was but what about one. uh uh maybe i have it no make it get a bitch with their hands on their knees huh make it get a bitch with their hands on their knees <laughs> that's not a hit <laughs> number one for seven straight weeks he was nominated for six grammys endorsement after endorsement tv performance after performance yeah getting away with murder at a walmart it seemed like nobody could stop this dude but then this guy decided to be in a bunch of controversies assaulting airport kiosk workers Damn. slapping a female fan for trying to take a picture of him beefing with jojo siwa just because she's taller than him bro was just that's nasty getting that's in nasty trouble. and the final straw was that 2021 rolling loud set where he he just started saying the dumbest shit. Ladies, if you like to shove bone balls and pineapples up your pussy, put your cell phone flashlights in the air right now. And fellas, if you like sucking on balls, leave. <laughs> I ain't with that gay stuff, man. Leave, man. I didn't watch the real, I didn't watch the real, uh, actual thing, so I have no clue what actually happened here. So, him getting canceled from this, I, it never made sense to me because I had never saw it, so. I ain't no Frey Goshen. Leave that stuff at home. Yeah, dude said some homophobic stuff, and basically the whole industry turned on him. He lost a majority of his endorsements. Damn. Bro was pulled off of concert lineups, and overall, Damn. the public wasn't really messing with him no more. He even one time had to cancel his New Orleans show because it only sold 500 tickets in a venue 
that's supposed to seat 14,000. If yeah. that doesn't indicate a fall off, then I don't know what does. His recent album, Baby on Baby 2, only sold 17K first week versus his 2019-2020 wow. albums that would sell 150K, get it number one on the Billboard wow. charts. It just seems like bro really messed his own career up for nothing. And some people still might say he hasn't fallen off. Look at his Spotify monthly listeners. Bro still pulling big numbers. Okay, yeah, he is. Remove the Dua Lipa song and that cuts off at least half of these listeners <laughs> at minimum. Then remove Rockstar. That's probably minus five million right there. Most of this dude's listeners are only listening to his hits that most of the time he's only featured in. It ain't Ooh. that hard to pinpoint this info. And do Ooh. I feel bad for his fall off? No! Bro did this entirely himself. Even on his new album, Baby on Baby 2, on his he song say? Socks, he, he do? says, Plus 20 million for keeping it real, bitch. I don't give a fuck about no money. Bro isn't even sorry. He That's some nice as cows, bro. Damn. Sorry. He basically said all the apologies. Oh, those were shins, my bad. Past, don't mean nothing. But who knows? Maybe he will make a comeback. He has a new song that debuted number 92 on the Billboard Hot yeah. 100. Although the Repo Reaper on TikTok is the yeah, only song is getting He's carrying, bro. That tells you where his career he's is at right now. He's carrying. All right, I got to move on from this dude and talk about a person that genuinely hurts my soul that chance, I have to say this. Chance the Rapper. Chance the Rapper, chance chance the rapper, the rapper bro. Started his chance. career with his breakout mixtape, 10 Day, which was, okay. But then the year after, Acid Rap came out and it was amazing. In my opinion, it's up there with hip hop's best all time mixtapes. Bro bar a unique sound to hip hop with the he fun, did. bouncy, yeah. and sometimes melodic tracks here. The whole mixtape brings a supreme vibe to it that a lot of other projects don't bring. Also, his ad libs going, ah, 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 Every ah. track, breathtaking, revolutionary. <laughs> Acid Rap is just a great project that introduces Charles to a much wider juice. audience. I Bro got is the to be big, Especially I upon the release yeah. of his album. Yeah. Mixtape. The Coloring Book. In middle school, I adored this album. It was constantly in my rotation. And personally, I loved it more than Acid Rap. I, I did too. I had every song on here on I repeat. I did too. And my favorite song on the album would change like every week. My favorite is All We Got. No, it's Angels. No, it's No Problems. Yeah. No, Juke Jam. This album yeah. is like perfect. I mean, I that, don't think. Oh my, I love every single one of them. I think the one I listened to the most out of those was probably, at the time it was No Problems because No Problems was a hit. But right now, I listen to I don't listen to Juke Jam no more. I listen to Angels. Angels is probably the ones. Angels. Na, 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 na. Ah, I got my city doing front flips. <laughs> oh my click get what? top tier hip-hop music or anything. Yeah. But I have zero complaints about the album. Yep. Other than the mixing and all night but i can forgive it this album is great i love this album so much he deserved all the praise and awards he got from it this album was a big part of my middle school days and chance was definitely one of my favorite rappers period smoking cigarettes is crazy though i was deeply anticipating more chance music in the future i mean he met kanye west he was never going to fail right so his next project was bound to succeed and then so it you thought three or so you thought book, he announced his debut album the big day holy guacamole this was a big day for me it I was wait yep. i was ready yeah friday morning excited. 12 a.m on release we were excited I put on my headphones i could feel the sweat going down my gluteus maximus i am so happy it's static bro I press play and my As wife, I, I, love, music, my wife. I love my wife. I love my life and wife, wife. Love my life. Love my wife and life, wife. Got a daughter. It was perhaps a little more experimental. Yeah. Something. Maybe not that. Wait. Dog, what the f am I listening to? It was garbage. Dreadful gobbledygook and yeah not in like a french montana fetty wop coke zoo nothing burger kind of way what because do you mean if it was it would actually be better because with a nothing Damn. burger, you just get no nutrition or enjoyment out of it the okay. big day is like receiving a lobotomy like first this album had like eight writers and eight producers for each song two the lyrics are just Look at this. Peanut butter jelly with a baseball bat. Peanut butter jelly with a peanut butter jelly. It'll break your back. <laughs> 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 
peak that's lyricism, bro. That is peak hip hop. That's peak rap. Peak lyricism. Peak writing, bro. You can't write it better than that, bro. Give him a round of applause. All the lyrics on this album are this corny and this trash. And when he's not talking about peanut butter, jelly, or God, he's talking about loving his wife. Now, I, I understand you love your wife, dude. I love your wife, too. But if you're not going to talk about your love for her in any kind of interesting way or do it in any other creative way other than just say, I love her and she's beautiful. She's my queen. Bro, I don't want to. I don't. Can you talk about something else? Can you yes. talk about doing drugs again, please? Please. please. <laughs> Every song has the same rhythm, tone, feel. It doesn't change or do anything interesting, which is even worse since this album is almost ass. an hour and 20 minutes long. Hours and 20 Honestly, of minutes of ass. This is probably the most disappointing album from an artist I loved I've ever listened to. Because even with the albums I don't like from artists that I love, there's usually a good few tracks I would come for. me, it would be Funeral by Lil Wayne. Funeral by Lil Wayne was such a, it was such a disappointment bro you know that i like but not this one not a single one on this album has replay value and when i wow. say these things i don't mean for anybody to shit on chance because i still think overall he's a great artist it's just this project upsets me was so, so much because this has been basically his last album for the past almost four years and the album sucks the man has released very little music since this album outside from that christmas mixtape he released and wraith in wraith with, with vic Omar mensa Young, whoever i don't care i'm not listening to that that's not a real project and i feel like this dude <laughs> knows the bad reception his album gets that's why he's been wearing his number three hat promoting coloring book for the past seven years i swear this hat is surgically attached to this man take that shit off already damn maybe i'm looking at chance's last projects through rose tinted glasses because mm. i listened to those albums as i was a kid and even though the big day is a terrible album it's not you're not you're not doing that bro go re-listen to those albums right now and they're fired i don't care i am so happy for the current success of chance in his career i love seeing him being part of modern media despite not releasing any music in a number of years i am so happy for him he might have fallen off quality wise but yeah. i only want future uphill success for him mm. no matter if he releases any more music or not man using a two-handed twister on chance right now extra spit extra slop he just twisting that thing he does release more music hopefully this album was just a hiccup and he starts burping again and yeah i feel like i've discussed enough in this video although i definitely could make a part two to this there's a few others off the top of my head that i could list like Coldplay and maroon 5 like how you go from this to this like, <laughs> also there's one more that fell off quality wise that i can rant about for days on end oh but that's for another day. No, who's I that? I feel like I've said my piece. No. And in conclusion, I kind of like hot shower. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's kind of grown on me. No. I'm sorry. It, it, it. <laughs>